Can you still hear me? Okay. Can you still hear me? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Okay. Can you hear me? You're good now. Okay. We can start. All right. So hi, hi Matthew. Hi everyone watching um, the recording on YouTube. Uh, this is the cohort for Mastering Shiny, and today we're going over uh, the testing chapter. Um, and for for today, I wanted to go over uh, a bit of the notes um, in our cohort from one of the past cohorts, as well as uh, take a look at notes from um, a workshop that I was part of. And this was in a package building uh, workshop last year at our studio. Uh, I'm going to share the link. And there is this perfect um, section on testing. Uh, so if you follow along there and go to the materials. Um, there's a whole section on uh, unit testing. And so that this is great. It gives, um, it goes into the reason uh, why you would want to test um, and goes through some, a few examples. Um, and that gives us a real backbone for um, testing in general, but also testing in Shiny. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, can you see that okay? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, cool. So I'll run through this. Um, I'll run through the... Um, the shit slide. I'll run through the notes as well, and then okay. um, maybe we can do uh, some interactive coding as well. Okay, that'll be good. Uh, let me. Okay, so um, we want to know the rationale for automating test. Um, uh, we will want to know as well. Um, what testing infrastructure looks like um, when you implement it in your code or your uh, in your shiny code or your package. Uh, what does that actually look like in practice? Um, so, so um, one of the benefits of we went over packages last week or two weeks ago, and one of the benefits of utilizing packages is being able to uh, use the package test that. Um, so that's that's a real benefit. Um, it makes testing uh, easier for you and easier to automate. Um, then we'll go ahead and create a test and then um, uh, we'll run we'll run all the tests at once. Um, so that's like basic outline. Um, so why test? Um, well, one, uh, to make sure that our code works. Um, oftentimes you won't realize that something's broken until either you're running it and maybe you're lucky and you get an error message or it's possible that your um, code silently breaks, meaning there's no warning, no error message, but it's doing some uh, unwanted behavior. Um, so this helps out with trying to minimize um, your code not working. Uh, when we refactor code, um, we want to make it sure that it still works. Um, so when you first, you know, create a function or you write some code, uh, you have something in mind with what that code does. 
um you you might run it interactively um and get some results um but when you update it this just makes sure that you're still getting um what you expect or so that's that's another important reason um so this is uh this probably doesn't mean too much to you um unless you go through some of the other sections of this uh of this um excuse me slides if you it will make more sense if you go back but uh, the, the overall concept is uh, there's a couple functions um, with some data and an input. Um, and the, you've got tibbles and you have some columns. Um, so you want to make sure that you always uh, get those. Um, so you might. Uh, you might check it interactively by um, using the class function, seeing that it's a tibble. Okay, that awesome, it passes. Check out Spain, uh, that passes. And then you wanna make sure that all of the columns are what you expect as well. So you, use the names function for Italy and you use the names function for Spain as well. Um, so that's um, this is uh, probably usually what you would do um, uh, it's, it's like the first intuition is to do everything interactively um but if you have more that you want to check um and you don't want to do it every time this is where um implementing some automation really helps so interactive testing uh it's informal testing uh so we build a function uh, loaded it into the package, uh, ran it, changed it if necessary, uh, loaded it again, and ran it interactively. So you can see this like cycle of um, running it interactively, making some changes, doing that again to see if it's what you expect, and continuously doing that. Um, I mean, it's not like, it's good that you're checking that interactively and making sure it does what you think. Um, but there can be a better way as well. Um, so why automate testing? Um, a problem, you forget all the interactive testing you've done um you can always like do the r studio shortcut and and go up to run some old code but uh like that can be cumbersome uh, if you start a new session that may not work either um so the solution is to have a system to store and rerun the test so you don't have to remember uh, any save time as well. Um, so why automate testing? Fewer bugs, you're explicit about behavior of functions. Uh, it encourages good code design. Um, if it's hard to write unit tests for your function, you may need to refactor it. Um, opportunity for a test driven development and uh, robustness. Um, your, your code is less, less likely to fail 
um, unless it's some edge case that the testing doesn't account for. Um, and I really like this to uh, encourages good code design. It gets you thinking in a uh, test-driven um, manner. Um, so that that's just makes your overall code better too. Um, so to read more, this um, the R packages also has a great uh, chapter on testing. Um, I'll slide that into the chat. Okay, so what does that look like in practice? What does the infrastructure look like? Um, so when setting up a test environment, all the test files go into the test folder. Um, so it makes sense. And all files are named test um, something dot R. Um, so that could be like, um, you have one for, you can break it up by module. Um, uh, DevTools helps you do that. Um, and then testsat.r runs, uh, runs all the tests in your folder. So in this example, the test something, uh, there's a function called test matches. Um, so any, so you can have several tests within each uh, test file. Uh, it might test uh, for a simple function, um, possibly a part of a complex function um all the tests for the same functionality in multiple functions um so this gets into the um uh, like the basic the basics for testing um is you give the code um some expectation and you compare it to the actual result. And there's uh, two types you can have, one where the result equals the expectation with no error, or you can even set up the result to not equal the expectation and, and produce an error. So there's, there's more, than way, more than one way to produce this. Uh, what does the workflow look like? Um, so when you set up a testing environment, you can use uh, the use this, use test. Um, and that three means um, oh, I think the, the three means what version. Uh, so let me go back. Um, make a test using use test, uh, run a set of tests, and then you can run all the tests at once using uh, DevTools. So when you set it up, um, it will set up a folder for you um, inside of test, um, and then that's where your test files live. Um, it edits the description when you do that. Sorry, uh, Trevi, can you hear me? Hello, Trevi. Um, 
Can you repeat that? I can't. Um, I I can't hear you too well. For the first line, yeah, test that. Um, use this. Use this. That. Um, and you include a three. Does that like um create the create the test files? Like, does it create the live test files that you use directly? Just when you write. And why is that? Is the three there? For for this sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one, yes. Um. What? <laughs> what's your What's your question? Like, why Why do we have the three, the three, the three there? Um, I, that's for just for specifying uh, the version. Oh, okay, okay. It's clear now. Okay. Uh, okay. or the the addition. Okay. Um, so I think if that's blank, then it defaults to whatever the default is. I'm not I'm not sure what the default is. Okay. Um, so that's that's in that'll be in your uh config test that addition uh for you to check as well. Um yeah, I, I forget why, but um that's how you would set up the version. Um, let's see. Uh, makes test test that dot r. This runs the test when you uh, all the tests when you do uh, uh, when you run dev tools check. So if you have multiple test files, that will that will run everything. Okay, so this is uh, setting it up. Oh yeah, three means test that addition three. Okay, uh, so we'll go through um, add test that creating uh, the different packages. Um, so, so once you have that set up, um, you'll want to go through and actually build test. Uh, so before we do that, uh, we'll take a look at some of the expect functions. Uh, the basic form is expect something, result versus expectation. Uh, expectation is what we expect. Actual re result is what you're comparing to that. Um, and then some functions have additional arguments. So for example, um, set the result to 42. Uh, we can expect the identical. Um, so we, we would expect no error. Uh, setting the result to A and comparing it to uh, the string A, uh, also no error. Um, but when you have uh, an unexpected result. Um, this error message will pop up uh, saying it's not equal to the expected. Um, and that's the same for strings as well. Um, some common expectations, uh, identical uh, testing for identity. Uh, testing for equality with some wiggle room, expect equal. Um, you can expect uh, true, so comparing some logicals. Um, testing whether objects have names and testing errors. So you don't, you don't always have to expect um, that things are equal. Um, so expecting a little equal wiggle room, excuse me. Um, so expect equal has some tolerance uh, when we set the result to uh, not quite 42, um, but close, uh, it will still pass.
Um, the default tolerance is bigger than this. Um, so this one doesn't pass, um, but you can uh, change the tolerance level depending on your uh, what you're doing. Um, yeah, so you can you can change that um, if you want a higher tolerance, and then your test uh, result will pass. Um, testing if something's true, um, comparing two strings, expecting them to not be equal. Um, but when they are equal, then uh, we'll get the error result. Um, testing whether objects have names. Um, so here we create a vector of named values and uh, we just have to pass it to this function. Um, and if we don't, then it errors out if we don't have names. Okay, so that's like the basics of the expect functions um, for when you would be creating a test. So how do you actually do that? Um, so you can create an open or just open a test file for um, something.r with uh, the function use test and your fun your uh, file name. And when you do this, it will automatically create um, a test for that in your test folder. Um, and if that is for our studio, if that R file is active in the editor, then you can just use um, use this use test and you don't have to specify um, which file it is. It will um, it will create one, it will create a test for your active file. Okay, so um, in order to create a test for um, this file, we would use use test and then it will um, create a new file in that folder, test matches. Um, the, the structure that we're looking for, um, we'll use the test that, um, we'll use test that, excuse me. And then um, the first part is what your test is doing followed by the actual test. So to check that multiplication works, um, we would expect that two times two is the same as four. So the general framework then would be um, just the description uh, followed by some uh, expectation functions. Uh, you list the expectations inside test that, um, and you can have as many as you need. Uh, ideally, two to six ish, or consider breaking the function into simpler functions. Okay, then this goes through and actually uh, creates some test. Um, so if you recall, uh, we had just done this interactively, checked the names as well as if the result was a tibble. Um, and then the, and one more test to make sure that the country column, uh, of the output is correct. Um, with another expect function. Okay, so this um, 
This is checking for if our result is a tibble. Um, the description, this function uh, gets the data. Uh, we're, we're using this function, the, fun uh, the one we're checking. And then we're just doing an expect true that it is indeed a tibble. So after you create it, you uh, can use the test file, um, the file name. And we passed. Uh, this is what it will look like. Uh, hooray. And you can also use the run test button in our studio. Uh, you can run all tests with DevTools test. Um, I guess, depending on how many tests you have, this could take a while. So you may not want to do this um, every time. Uh, but in our example, we only have one test created so far. Um, and that one passes. Okay, adding another one of our expectations. Uh, so we expect the names of the columns uh, to be this. Uh, similar setup, we, we use the function, uh, get our data. Um, we check that it's a tibble and we check that um, the name columns for Italy are equal to our expectations. Again, we run. Uh, this time it shows two pass. We can run all using DevTools as well. And the last one is similar. We'll just put that at the end. Um, and we expect that the uh, country name for this column is equal to. Uh, the same one, Italy. Um, so yeah, that it's a similar process. Um, another uh, method of uh, for testing development is is bug driven development. So if you do find a bug. Um, that's when you would add a test after that. Um, so just another, another way to, just another framework for, for building tests. Um, last bit, test coverage. Um, test coverage is the percentage of package code run when the test suite is run. Uh, higher is better, but it's really just a um, there, there's no like a hundred percent, like a like a notational goal, but it's rarely achieved. Um, you can even have a hundred percent coverage and still, um, still be missing, um test or or um, like bugs can still uh, be present even if you have 100% um, coverage. But this is uh, it's a good tool to still have for at least you can pay attention to a little bit just to make sure that um, you have a higher number. Um, so there are two functions you might use interactively, uh, test coverage active file, and then you can test uh, coverage for your whole package. So if you, if you did that on the matches, um, it'll show 100% coverage, the whole package the same.
Okay. Excuse me. So in summary, uh, automated testing means you can systematically check your code still works when adding features. Um, test that, quote, tries to make testing as fun as possible. Um, it all lives in the test, test that folder, uh, named test um, something.r. Um, the structure looks like this. And then the test that um, file runs all the tests. And that should not normally be edited. Um, and then just some final summary uh, notes. Um, do you have any questions, Matthew? Uh, no, no, no questions. Uh, no questions. Okay, let me. So this is, um, this is the package that is available, and you can actually, um, you can actually go and and download this as well. It's on uh, GitHub. Okay. Um, I wonder if I can. find this really quick. Yeah, here we go. Let me share this as well. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> okay, so this is um this is the complete uh package um the the code only walked through making tests for this particular file, um, but you can also make um, make further tests for for all your other um, functions and files as well. Um, ideally, when you create a new file and some new functions, you would add some test uh, as well, um, like as soon as you build that new um, file. So here, um, here we have tests for the git matches, matches, uh, plot. Um, So, uh, so these are the these are the three that we went through. Um, there's some additional uh, additional tests added to this file as well. Um, let's see. So let's load all. Okay. Let's see. It looks like we can do, um, we can run tests for this file. So it will it will show up in the build um, frame, uh, loads the package, and then it will tell you um, how many passed, how many failed, and then there are either warnings and uh, you can skip parts as well. Um, I think this one tests all of them. Yeah, 
So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, when you use DevTools, when you use DevTools test, um, very similar, um, except it will pass, it will test the whole package. Um, so it goes through and it'll print out each uh, file that it goes through, how many tests um, for each file and which ones were okay, which ones failed, um, and all 43 uh, passed for this one. Um, I'm not sure about the test coverage right now for this. It may be smaller than 100%. So this will this will be for the package. Um, I need the cover um, package installed. Um, if this takes too long, I can uh, switch out or switch over to uh, the other notes. Okay, it looks like it's okay. Okay, so it ran it again. Um, so this, like again, it's not the it's not a perfect um, metric, but um, you know the higher the better. Um, so like if you're looking at this, you might uh, you you might look at this get matches file and and think uh, maybe I could do better, have more coverage for this one. Um, again, not not like perfect, but uh, that will help you understand um, what parts of your package may need uh, more coverage. Um, so let me go back. Uh, we're, we have about 15 minutes. I, I want to cover some of the shiny specific um, elements as well. Um, so the, these are the notes from <clears throat> the previous cohort. Um, some of this, uh, we've already talked about, um, but again, some of this is new. So not just to make sure that, uh, you don't, you don't make breaking changes when updating codes, um, uh, but it gives you confidence when updating our packages uh, data and it can keep your colleagues happy as well. Um, it will help them understand your code better and to make sure that they know it's running as intended. So different, um, testing approaches, test-driven development, which uh, when you write the code, you're, you're writing and developing tests at the same time. Uh, there's bug-driven development. You find a bug and you create a test. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not too confident on the test and commit revert. Um, you may have to go back to the first cohort video to um, understand that. Uh, so we just focused on uh, testing for packages, uh, the non-reactive functions, uh, but there's also um, uh, input or interactive testing uh, browser or JavaScript, JavaScript, excuse me, testing uh, and visual outputs of the test. 
Um, so Shiny has a few more, but um, it's not too dissimilar from what we have already covered. Um, Russ, I believe, was one that wrote these notes. Uh, he actually has, he actually wrote up um, a Shiny app on GitHub, and there are different um, different branches uh, that you can walk through and uh, see how he's how he's evolving the app. Um, so he went through a similar workflow, uh, took an app, made it into a package, uh, make sure the package passes, uh, add tests for the non-reactive, add tests for uh, the app server function, add reactivity tests for the module server function. Uh, so you can go through and look at the different changes. Um, this is the uh, structure for using test that. Um, one that we didn't go over was this um, snaps file um, that is markdown, um, that, but that is just optional. Okay, so recommended workflow, uh, create test using uh, the use test function. You go in, you create tests and, and expectations. Uh, you run you run the test. Um, you, maybe you'll find some new bugs, um, test the coverage, and then run uh, run dev tools test for the whole package. Okay, so this is um, this is the app. Um, so this follows um, this follows the same structure as we had gone over before uh, test that and then description uh, provide some data and then we're testing this count by weight um, function so we when creating the test we would expect uh, that the result is is equal to what we expect Um, so this is what um, I think this is important to go over and make sure that we cover um, this as well as the the next section as well um, the the JavaScript and other parts are uh, good to know, but I think this one is is definitely necessary. Um, so when we're testing reactivity, uh, it's a bit different, um, but really uh, it just requires a server, uh, the thing that runs, and a server function, uh, the thing that's ran. <laughs> um, test require data. Uh, we don't want to use the data for the main app. Um, one, this could make it slower and, and more cumbersome. Uh, so this this will make it uh, a lot more lightweight. Um, so we just want to extract the server uh, from from our app uh, and then pass uh, the data sets into the server as arguments. Um, 
Server functions take arguments. Uh, how do we pass them into the data? Okay, so we have a restructured app. Um, this is where Shiny test server comes in. Um, <clears throat> this is the this is the basic. Um, this is the basic um, uh, overview of what that looks like. You you want some? You just need some server function and then uh, some test. Um, actually, I think I like the book example here. Okay. Uh, so we have we have some app uh, with uh, some inputs and a server that that does um, that that does some something, um, and then produce uh, text. Uh, so to test it, we use test server. Um, use the session set, set inputs to set um, our inputs. And then, um, uh, of course, you can print the output and um, what, what function you're testing. So that's that's testing it in uh, in your console. Like, how would you how would that look in uh, actual code? Um, so we use the test side again. It's very much not too dissimilar from what we've already done, uh, but instead we're just using um, test server adding inputs, and then doing our expectations. Um, so really, like once you get the hang of that, um, just that small change, it's basically the same thing. Um, the, the one difference being is if you're debugging some test, uh, you'll need to add a browser inside of test server um, so that you can interactively uh, diagnose the problem. Um, you can test a module in a similar way to testing an app function, but here it's a little more clear that you're only testing the server side of the module. Um, let's start with a simple module that uses three outputs to display a brief summary of a variable. Um, <clears throat> So we have our sum, our UI and our server. Uh, we'll use test server as above, but the call is a little different. Uh, as before, the first argument is the server function, but now we also need to supply additional arguments in a list called args. Um, sorry about that. Um, this takes a list of arguments to the module server. Uh, the ID argument is optional. Test server will fill it in automatically. Uh, then we finish up the code to run. Uh, so args uh, being the main uh, difference. Um, and with our expectations. Um, I was, I think this did go over. So set inputs, um, we set the input values for the server. Session flush react, setting a value doesn't auto update the reactive graph. This function forces the reactive graph to update. And then uh, session get returned and session uh, elapsed for advancing the time and assessing the value returned by module. 
Okay, so modules, not just a small difference. Um, I see that we're almost at time. Um, Uh, the main thing I got from the JavaScript portion was, uh, using, um, shiny driver. Um, so there, there were like some, uh, slight differences in this, um, as well as, uh, I think it utilizes R6 for testing. Yeah. Um, and then for testing visuals, um, uh, it requires snapshotting. Um, so you need to, uh, it's basically comparing like snapshots of your app um and then seeing if they uh should be equal or not um so those two are good to know and and good to under like have knowledge of uh but i think that the ones that we mainly covered are going to be your bread and butter of testing um you still might want to test JavaScript and, and test the visuals. Um, but the, the first testing the non-reactivity and the reactivity, that's going to be uh, a, a big source for your test. Uh, so this gets into the philosophy, um, when you should write your test. Um, I think uh, it's a good habit to write test. Um, if you haven't, um, some tests are better than no test. Uh, so I, I would suggest like, if you have some code, just, just trying to start small and then, and then build up from there. Um, so that was mainly uh, that was mainly the test app package. Uh, there are some other packages for testing uh, that you might want to uh, check out for yourself. Um, but yeah, I guess my advice would be um, check out the R packages um, testing. Uh, testing chapter as well. Um, and then just slowly start building tests yourself if you haven't already. Um, thank you so much, Jerkin. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. Uh, do you have any questions before uh, mm -hmm. we get going? No, no, no.